Carbon dioxide levels on Earth for most of the last 600 million years were much higher than they are now. Corals and shellfish evolved during the Cambrian era when CO2 levels were nearly 20 times as high as they are now. If we look over here on this geological time chart, it says Cambrian era, abundant life in the seas. If ocean acidification was a real problem, there wouldn't have been any life in the seas, much less abundant life in the seas. As a geologist, I rely on actual historical data, not fake computer models. Let's take a look at science news for students. Animals, fossils, evolution, when life exploded. Scientists probe what happened 540 million years ago to trigger the biggest emergence ever of animal species. Now let's look at what CO2 levels were right at the time when the biggest explosion of life occurred. Well look at that, the biggest explosion of life occurred right when CO2 levels were at their peak for the last 600 million years. This tells us that carbon dioxide is tremendously beneficial for life. As is normally the case, climate alarmists have no idea what they're talking about and they have everything exactly backwards. They rely on computer models rather than history. Computer models can generate any result you want and generally just reflect the inherent biases of the person who wrote the software. The great American physicist and Nobel laureate Richard Feynman said, It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiments, it's wrong. Now let's look at what's wrong with the models. If climate alarmists were geologists instead of just theoreticians, they would have known that the oceans are underlain by basalt. Basalt is an alkali rock which comes out of volcanoes and buffers the pH of the ocean. Because the oceans are underlain by alkali rock, the pH range of the ocean is very limited. You could dump a lot of acid into the ocean and it would react with the basaltic rock at the bottom and get neutralized. The pH of the ocean is primarily controlled by the underlying rock not the atmospheric CO2 content. Thus, we were able to have an explosion of life at 7,000 parts per million CO2. If the pH was controlled by atmospheric CO2, these huge swings would have been catastrophic. So we've pretty much covered the science. Now let's look at some of the psychological aspects of this. Last year, I went snorkeling in Acamal, Mexico with a very progressive friend. The part of the coral reef we went snorkeling at was dead. She was convinced that it was because of coral bleaching and ocean acidification. I did some research online and found that other people had taken very nice pictures of the coral reef at Acamel, so apparently we were just at a bad spot. I know that the reef was damaged heavily by Hurricane Wilma in 2005. And later in the week we went snorkeling at Cozumel about 10 miles away. Cozumel is the second largest reef system in the world after the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. The reef at Cozumel has recovered very nicely from Hurricane Wilma. So it's fascinating that ocean acidification decided to target the reef at Acamel, but leave the reef at Cozumel alone. Global warming is just so fickle. I've talked to people at the National Center for Atmospheric Research here in Boulder who've said, well, even if we're wrong about climate, we're still doing the right thing because of ocean acidification. One layer of nonsense being justified by another. The climate alarmist clown show never seems to end.